Okay, so this is ugly here. What not to do. What not to do when you have a fly rod. So now, let's talk about this for a second. You see how the top half of the rod is almost straight down? Yeah. So it's got no stress on it. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. So now if I tried to land a fish and I lift up like this, I'm asking that part of the rod to lift three pounds. And you'll see people in pictures going, yeah. It's like, no, no, I want this part of the rod to do the heavy lifting. So keep your hands down here. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was a better break. <laughs> so, you know, a little four weight. So what happens is once a rod's pegged out like that, a good rod, a good break is in the butt of the rod. That just tells me that I've really pegged out the rod. I've used all of the tip fibers have done their job. So that tip didn't break, it transferred all the way down, and now I'm using the butt of the rod to break the rod. But you see how, like, you think you're pulling five pounds on a fish. If your rod tip's pointed up, you aren't. And so when I look at a break, I look at, you know, did it shear off? We talked about, okay, the amount of strength in a rod. You know, you look at that tip, but if I provide a, a spot for the energy to focus on, you could just, so they seem really fragile if you provide a focus point. Gary Loomis once told me that the only thing that should have a lifetime unconditional warranty is an anvil. <laughs> I mean, you could break a hammer handle or a crescent wrench. And here we want three wraps of ultra high modulus carbon fiber. And we expect Kevin to hand me a new rod when I break one. It's like, come on. We want to make an unbreakable fly rod. I said I could do it. I could make it solid. So the idea is, if the rod breaks right away, probably our fault. If it doesn't break the first day you use it, probably your fault or bad luck or the guide hit you or something. But the idea is that for uh, at Echo, I choose the materials to match kind of the, the gig.